140. If you missed it before the break, we announced your Miss South Africa 2020 Top 5. Congratulations once again to our girls, Tato, Melissa, Lebohan, Natasha, and Shurupazzo. Now, one of these young ladies will be crowned the next Miss South Africa in just the next 14 minutes. But first, two very, very crucial rounds of judging. First up, question and answers. Each judge will ask one contestant a question that is unknown to them, and of course, they will have 30 seconds to answer that question. Anele, first of all, you look regal tonight. Over to you, and I'm going to call you, Tato. The spotlight is yours. First things first, well done for making this Fatato. You look absolutely wonderful tonight. My question to you is, South Africa and the world became a global community in the last 10 months. What were the glaring inequalities that separated us and what unified us? Good evening. What separated us is what has always separated us, which is the socio-economic equalities. I mean, some people were trying out new recipes, meanwhile others were starving. But I think what united us is that we all suffered some kind of pain and were able to understand a pain because you've experienced it, therefore can recognize it in someone else. I think we were united by the pain, so we showed more compassion and more caring towards each other. Thank you. Thank you, Sato. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to call Melissa. And I'm handing her over to you, Leandy. Sure. Doesn't she look amazing, everyone? Lady in red. Melissa, congratulations. A terrible pandemic hit the world this year. What advice would you give to someone who had to close their business because of it? One thing I've come to understand is that people with small businesses treat them like their babies. It's something they've worked very hard for, and it's not us to just say, oh no, you can just easily move on and build up again. I believe that anyone needs to take the time to mourn and to respect that and build up again once they're ready. As a person, all my job is to do is just to encourage them and just make sure that they have the strength to start all over again. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Your time has come, Lebohan. And of course, Peggy Sue, over to you. Hello, Lebohan. You look absolutely beautiful, and congratulations to making it to the top five. Thank you. In addition to the wealth divide, the COVID-19 pandemic has strongly highlighted the digital divide. What advice to our government, corporates, and individuals would you give to narrow this divide? I think we live in an age where information and knowledge is used to judge people. And it's sad that we live in a country that has always struggled to give infrastructure and access to quality education. But I believe that there is efforts being made to making sure that um, access to digital devices and data um, is given to people. But I would also add that maybe we should focus also on creating um, educational systems Natasha, the moment is yours. Over to you, Kim. Good evening, Natasha. You look amazing this evening, and you should be so proud of yourself for making Thank it this you, far. On March the 27th, our country went to a full lockdown, leaving South Africans feeling deeply insecure, uncertain, and afraid. When things become challenging in your life, tell me about the internal space or place where you go to steady yourself. As a business owner, I know how many lives have been impacted through COVID-19. Um, and as it is actually Mental Health Awareness Month, I think it's very, very important to take care of your mental health. Um, what I would personally do is spend time with family and friends. Um, revert back and see what you still have left and not only look at what you lost. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. And last but certainly not least, Shudufazo, and over to you, Zosin. 
Hi, Shudu. How are you feeling? I feel excited. <laughs> well, congratulations on making it this far. You've been doing an incredible job. My question for you is, in the past year, we've witnessed a global wave of mass demonstrations against gender-based violence and the Black Lives Matter movement. If you could mobilize a group of people, what movement would you mobilize and why? I would call my movement the Mindful Movement. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death between pe people aged 15 and 29. Um, one in three people are expected to suffer from mental illnesses in their lifetime. So I believe that mobilizing people to strive for mental health would actually fix so many social ills in our society. And that is what I would mobilize. Thank you. Thank you, Shida Fatso. And there we go. The first round of questions is over. And congratulations to all five who were so smart, so articulate, and so very poised. And answering a question in front of millions of people around the world is no easy feat. But our auditors at PwC have to furiously tally up scores before we announce the top three. So let's take a break to give them a moment. And when we return, we will announce the three ladies who will represent South Africa at Miss Supranational, Miss World, and Miss Universe, plus a performance from Cape Town's very own Jimmy Nevis. Stay tuned.